Hey, everybody. Oh, I'm back at you once again. I'm coming at you often. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm bringing you some strong, strong information, some Black history from the people who know it's straight, no chaser. You're on strong inspirations. Oh, my God. Watch out. Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. And here we go again. Now, uh, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on the video. Hit the notifications button so you know when I'm coming at you with some new material. And then lastly, and this, this is easy, tell somebody about strong inspirations. It's, it's that easy. And you see how consistent I am in doing it. Now, let me do my little commercial for you folks. I got a movie out. It's called Business in the Black. The Rise of Black Business in America. It's a documentary. This is the DVD for those who have DVD players, but it's also streaming on Amazon. And then I got this book out too. The book complements the DVD, but the book is more thorough. It's more facts. But the DVD got some interviews in it. And again, it's on Amazon. And uh, my website is businessintheblack.net, everybody. Get your copy of them, please. But without further ado, uh, I got two guys on this interview. I got two. I, it's double. Double your pleasure. Both of these brothers going to tell you some stuff that's going to blow your mind. Now, many of you might know I'm out of Detroit. Well, about 45-minute drive from here is a small town that's jamming with a ton of history of Black folks in there jamming called Toledo, Ohio. These brothers are out of Toledo and they're holding it down. They're going to tell us some history. So gentlemen, introduce yourself. Let's rock and roll. Hey, Duke, why don't you go first? Hey, uh, my name is Robert Smith. I, I'm with an organization called the African-American Legacy Project. It was founded in 2004. We document the history of African-Americans within the Northwest Ohio region. Yeah, I'm Jay Black, uh, Vice President of the Legal African American Chamber of Commerce, and also uh, CEO of Pathway Toledo, a local nonprofit. Uh, and our mission is moving people from poverty to self sufficiency. Ooh, my God. Now, I know Jay because Jay hosted me when I showed my movie in Toledo. And uh, that's got to be a couple of years ago. Me and the brother been staying in touch because he, he, he's a cool dude, everybody. So hey, tell us a little bit of some black history in Toledo. Well, when we, you and I initially talked, uh, Anthony, um, I was sharing with you that uh, back in the day, and I think I was in junior high going into high school, and that's when I met Duke, Bobby Smith. He was a local uh, radio DJ on the uh, uh, only black owned radio station in this area at the time. But we used to have our own black, uh, black Wall Street here in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, we called it the block. And uh, it was neat for me growing up seeing um, um, our folks involved in every area of business that my, my family uh, had a need for. And uh, this was during the time when um, the whole community was involved in the raising of the children and uh, everything we needed was within walking distance of my neighborhood. So I, I grew up with uh, seeing folks that look like me that own gas stations, a movie house, uh, a bowling alley, a um, skating rink, um, of course, funeral homes. Um, our, our PC our primary care provider was, was an African-American doctor. Um, and I tell my kids that I didn't have a white teacher until I was in the sixth grade in elementary. Wow. And back during those times, at least in, in our hometown, the teachers lived in the same neighborhoods that they taught in. So what that meant, Anthony, was 
if I was acting in school, acting up in school, and I happened to be walking home that day with the teacher whose class I was in, and she saw my mother and father sitting on the porch, she just stopped by and tell them I was acting up. So wow. how many so how many that, times did you think that had to happen to me before I got the message? Yeah, exactly. One time. Yeah, exactly. So, but we had clothing stores, uh, like I mentioned, gas stations, uh, grocery stores. Um, the only thing that we didn't have, at least in my neighborhood, was an auto dealership. But everything else that we did, you know, there was somebody that looked like us who owned that business. So I grew up with with this mentality that, um, you know, let's do let's do business with with uh, our own folks. I may be a tad bit older than Jay. I won't admit it. Right, right. Um, and it's true what he says. Um, there's this historical reference. It's called Door Street here in Toledo. Black Bottom in Detroit. Um, you know, the neighborhoods from whence we came, once we emanated, uh, we were always in a different place at the, the other place. There was always that neighborhood. But that neighborhood allowed us to be so resilient and created a certain kind of pride. Uh, we've interviewed uh, the children of the people who migrated north, who many of them are like, uh, even that generation is almost disappearing. But when we interviewed them independently, they talked about two or three things, um, family, the want, need, and desire for education, uh, 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 respect, and there was this core religious thing. Those are the things that, and, and additionally, really a strong work ethic. Uh, those are the things that embodied the communities from whence we, our generation, my generation, and Jay came. Those are things we learned, we knew through osmosis by being present. Uh, neighborhoods are gone, businesses are gone, community leadership is gone and you see the results across the country. Uh, let me ask you this. Let's go back to a, a little bit before that. How did black folks get to Toledo? Why did they go to Toledo? Um, well, I, I can tell you in my own parents' um, experience, um, this Toledo um, and Detroit area, uh, my father's from, from Arkansas, mom is from from uh, Georgia, my mom's family came up first. And this region was like the halfway point between where they were from and uh, places like Chicago and even further Northwest or Northeast was New York. So, um, and when, when they came, um, we were in the midst of the uh, industrial Re revolution or, or, or the mechanization of, of the auto industry or the, right, or the right. auto industry. So as you know, Detroit Toledo uh, uh, was the hub for uh, automotive industries and manufacturers and automotive industry related suppliers and so forth. So it was easy for, for my dad to get a, get a factory job as he migrated from the North. So it's really a, a stopping uh, point between here and, and um, you know, Detroit and Chicago and New York. What, what plant did he work at? He worked at a foundry called uh, Unicast, which uh, then they're no longer in business. Yeah. Went from Unicast to- uh, What did they do? What is, what is Unicast? What did they- They made steel for the automotive industry. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was still, still black. Yeah. You know, a different way to say it is uh, people were migrating north for the one of a better life. And all too often, you probably heard the story where one family member would come uh, to the city and then they would um, find a job, build the infrastructure, if you will, to bring additional family members in. They would go on and explore. You can always, I'm, I'm sure both of you remember where people would talk about Uncle Joe stayed with us for a while sure, and then sure. we and bought the house. And that's how we, as a community, uh, grew and were able to, able to coagulate. And, you know, we, you know, I, I, I miss Sunday dinners because we never knew who was going to show up at our house. And 
my mother and father had such a great spirit. My father had this line, uh, eat all you want, but don't leave anything on the plate. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a lot, um, but the generosity in the household, you know, Sunday was a beautiful day. And then, you know, it was about conversations. It was about young folks listening to, uh, uh, to adults talk, and, and therein is how many of the stories got uh, transposed, translated. You know, we, they always talk about the oral history. Um, we've lost a lot of it, man, and I'm thank you for what you're doing um, because we need to document. Oh, sure. Let me ask you this then. Let, let me see if y'all know this one. Uh, how did they get to Toledo? Did they catch a bus, a train? It, it did was they have a car? How did they get there to Toledo? Yeah, in, in my parents' case, uh, with my mom's family, they came up first. It was by rail. And uh, in, in my dad's case, it was by a car caravan because he came up. My mother came up as a, as a child. Um, I think she was in, in middle school when she came up. But my father came up as an adult. So, so your mother came up with your with her parents, uh, that's dad, correct. mom, what have you. Yeah, yeah. My dad was a uh, grandfather was a sharecropper, and he came up and got a factory job with what was known then as uh, Champion Spark Plug, and they used to be one of the major uh, major employers of uh, in this area, and they supplied spark plugs to the automotive industry. And uh, my dad came up. You know, like I said, when he was uh, uh, an adult, but uh, factory life for our folks back then, you know, you could you could uh, um, have so a, a lower middle class lifestyle. Yeah, sure. sure. You, you know, working in the factory. So, um, and that's how he got his start. Uh, uh, do you know, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Robert. So you know. Um, Jay's story is so accurate. I mean, uh, we hear that story over and over again. One of the oldest black businesses is um, a gentleman by the name of Poor Clark. Uh, his mother put he and his sister on the train uh, to Toledo to be with their father who actually had an automotive repair shop just on the tip of South Toledo. Um, uh, and Poor Clark tells the story that he and his sister had never seen electricity before. You know, it's, yeah. it seems it seems funny now, but this guy is, you know, he's probably not probably he's in his nineties. He has grown a, a barber business that is incredible, you know, uh, and he's done it the hard way through through work. So you know, they're just uh, we've heard a story. There was a guy who we interviewed a police officer whose family got run out of a Kentucky, and he talked about how his family rode the back of a pickup from Kentucky to Toledo. And then there are other cases where people were headed out to Detroit and uh, points points north and, you know, truth be told, yeah. some, some folks may run, just simply run out of gas. This was it, this was, yeah, this right. was the line, you know, so, uh, but what it proves, what continues to prove is we are a resilient people. Yeah. Did, did Was there racial tension in Toledo ever? Uh... A, a riot. Where you, wait a minute, where you live? <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, we had our riot in Detroit in 67. Yeah, we well, know that there was riots before 67. Well, 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 well here, 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 Anthony, this is what I say. Whatever is going on in Detroit will happen here in 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So we, 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 had a, we had a mini riot here in 67. And, um, I was still in grade school at the time, but uh, I remember it. Well, I was up in the middle of it, to be yeah. quite honest. Um, Door Street again, um, it was the 1300 block of Door Street. In fact, uh, a white police officer got killed and things were things really, really got hairy. Black police officer got injured. Uh, some of, uh, we've interviewed many of the black police officers in the, the amazing story is that most of the black police officers were off duty the night that all of this happened. And they were, they, they rounded them up, they called them, they found them. Some of these guys were out, out uh, for the evening and they put them in line. And these guys led the, uh, led the, the police down Door Street in their black leather coats and, 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 and alligators. And then there was a whole line of, uh, 
uh, other police officers in full riot gear behind them. So, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so Toledo had, you know, you can't judge the, the, the sense of uh, people still remember that. Yeah. It's not a fable, it's the truth. There, there was loss of life. In fact, that was the that was the beginning of the end of black business for Toledo. Oh my God. And, and Anthony, this this is a, a little known black history fact. Sure. Uh Bobby, I, I still call him the Duke, was more connected and engaged than I was because he was a disc jockey back in the day. Okay. And his handle was the Duke. <laughs> okay. I still call him that. Yeah. yeah. See, so, I can so tell he got a smooth voice. So, so you might be too young and remember what a forty-five record is or yeah, oh yeah, eight-track right. cassette. Oh, for sure, yeah, I know those. <laughs> you, how do you know them? <laughs> yeah, I remember those. Now, yeah, was we, was Toledo? Is Toledo uh, known for anything like? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we were music we're known, or we're, we're here, Anthony. We've been known up until. I would say, what do you think, Duke? Late '90s, early 2000s, as a glass glass capital of the world. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah. We've always been known as that. The world. Over my over my shoulder is Wilbur Skeeter McClure, who just passed away this year. He uh, won a gold medal in the Rome Olympics. His roommate was Muhammad Ali. Ali used to come to town and train. Toledo was known for boxing, amateur boxing around Lindell Holmes and that came up to Detroit to work out of your gym is, is Toledo. And so many other box, boxers uh, had that legacy as well. And for per capita for athletes, uh, uh, Toledo produces a lot of athletes. Uh, uh, we are, uh, you know what? We really were pretty close to being called Toledo, Michigan. Yeah, to be really? quite honest, yeah. yeah, we were real close to being in Toledo, Michigan. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we feel like there's a camaraderie between ourselves in Michigan. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. any any bright African American will uh, leave Toledo frequently to go to Michigan and refresh because you guys bring something to the table that um, yeah. helps us rejuvenate and come back and and. and uh, uh, and, and, and take care of the business at hand, let me say yeah. that. Now, uh, uh, tell us about the uh, Legacy Museum and what might be in the museum as, as it flourishes uh, from, you know, starting to in the future. Um, when we started, we had Dr. Charles Wright, your way. Yeah. Uh, the director of the museum, she's no longer there. Um, yeah. Was one of the people who really became a mentor for us. Um, when we started, we had nothing. I mean, nothing but a dream. Uh, that was 16 years ago. Uh, right now we have over 10,000 images and unknown unknown number of uh, 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 three-dimensional items. Um, we have started mm -hmm. a, we have started a, a African American Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, that's really taken off about four years in. Uh, uh, in fact, while we were beginning to talk, I just got a call from Denver from a guy by the name of Odell Berry, who used to play with the Broncos, but he went on to become mayor of a small city in Denver. We're documenting. He's, and that was when uh, Denver was in the was the AFL before yeah, the yeah. two leagues yeah. merged. Yeah. So, and then there was a Ricky Upchurch. I mean, Curtis Johnson played with the Miami Dolphins. I mean, don't let me get me started on this. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, we're all, no, no, we're no, not here, we're, here, here, Duke, Duke, Duke. Here's, hey, a little known, here's a little known history fact Jay Black, uh, Curtis, the Cowboys. <laughs> Curtis Johnson is the only athlete in modern history who was. Uh, went through an undefeated college season at the three, and he played for the only professional football team that went undefeated for a season. A 10 and 0 Miami, 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 Miami Dolphins. Yep. 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 So we are, you know, we're, we have a, we have been collecting the histories. You know what? Uh, let me just say it this way um, we have the opportunity to hold the history the stories of our community and uh, we know 
um, we know it's a privilege, put it like that. Sure. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. So, you know, uh, next time you come down, walk yeah. through with Jay, walk out on the patio and we'll just sit down and talk. So, you know, we're now, do y'all sure. have a physical structure yet for the museum? Uh, abso absolutely. We do. Okay. Jay was just here about a month ago, wasn't it, Jay? Yep. yep. Yeah, we do. Yep. We really do. Uh, we're in a pretty important community gateway. You get off an exit 202B Collingwood, uh, which is the same as you would get off of the Toledo Museum of Art. And we are just like uh, 10 seconds away from the, I the got you. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Now, Jay, you said you, in your business, you do something to help people. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, this agency was established by President Johnson's Act in 1964, the, the War on Poverty. And it used to be called the Economic Opportunity and Planning Association. And it was established as the anti-poverty agency um, in Northwest Ohio. And uh, I don't know, early 2000s, um, EOPA went away and, and Pathway um, took over, which is now the organization, the organization that, that I lead. And we get federal grants, um, and federal monies from uh, and, and monies from the uh, feds and the state to do programs uh, to, to help pe people who want to be helped. By the way, uh, move from poverty to, to self sufficiency. And what I what I plan to do, Anthony, and, and, and you'll know me for this, is right now our mission is uh, to move people from uh, poverty to self sufficiency. I want to add a third pillar to that, to prosperity through entrepreneurship. Okay. So you know that's right in my wheelhouse, yeah, and that's oh, what I sure. have a passion for. Sure, sure. sure. So, uh, but yeah, we do that, um, and our, our typical uh, uh, client is, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, just at the poverty level, just above, and we work with them to get them, uh, you know, help them find jobs. Um, I'm, I'm going to attract some money so I can develop a program program that will uh, allow me to help them uh, become entrepreneurs, successful yeah. entrepreneurs. Sure. And uh, we do the everyday blocking and tackling uh, in helping people who need rent and mortgage assistance and uh, emergency utility assistance and emergency home repair and also workforce development and training. Mm, beautiful. Now, uh, let me uh, promote you all by, uh, don't give your telephone number. Do you have a website, uh, Jay and Robert, so that people can check your website out? Yeah, um, I have to um, with the, the African American Chamber of Commerce. It's ToledoAACC.org. Okay. And my day job, as I mentioned earlier, is CEO of Pathway Toledo. Uh, the website is um, Pathway toledo.org okay robert what's so, the website for the museum so it's a uh, real simple uh http say it slower uh, say it slower africanamericanlegacy.org okay uh you can go up uh, right now we've got a uh, in the video section we did a piece called voices where we had young bright african-american minds meet with top law enforcement and discuss uh, uh, the Floyd incident. It's a powerful piece. These young people did more than hold their own ground. I think people would appreciate uh, seeing that. Yeah, okay. right on brothers. Well, as we come to a close, man, I just, uh, I got, yeah, man, y'all have a ministry. It's a calling, no it's question. It's a calling. Y'all yeah. got a ministry. Uh, to do what you do and I appreciate you took time out of your ministry to be with me on strong inspirations and and share this with folk uh, thank you so very much yep. and everybody check out those websites uh, to the museum uh, throw them a few dollars because you know museums work on donations along with grants uh, so, you know, you can do it through, I'm sure, on the website. All that information is there. Uh, when you are driving up along I-75, stop off in Toledo. 
and uh, and check them out. They got some black restaurants and and, and just you know it's it's, it's a thriving uh, community. And uh, again, like I said at the beginning, come on, folk, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification button. Tell some people about strong inspirations. Get a copy of my book. You know what I mean. And uh, I thank you, brothers, for being on here today. I'm going to stay in touch. I'm going to tell some people about what you're doing. Stay strong. Stay safe. Stay on your grind. Stay well. We out.